Okay, <laughs> it's that time again. And today it's very special. Why? Today it's most embarrassing moments. Oh, ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, you have a real doozy <laughs> that I know about. I mean, you have one that nobody else has no. ever had, no. as far as I know. No. Okay. And this was in Las Vegas. No. Okay. No, no, but I'm not going to tell any more than that. All I'm telling you is that when this happened in Las Vegas, it made headlines and people talked about it for years afterwards. No. Okay. That's how embarrassing the moment was. No. And you will find out what that is, folks, on the Suzanne Summer Show. And here she is. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Hi there. Hi, Caroline. Uh, good evening. Ah, I have to turn this on a little bit because it's fitting. I was helping women with their hormones today. It's interesting. Um, I start, I'll hear uh, th this one woman who wrote me. I watch her on TV all the time, and uh, she's just this great woman. She goes, I'm sweating all night, and I can't, and I can't, and I had, Alan had sent her one of my lectures and she said, oh my God, I just got, you got to help me. And then another woman, oh my God, you got to help me. And I realized, where are the doctors? Where are the doctors? But, but then I know where they are because they were not taught anything about hormones, in particular, bioidentical hormones in medical school. Instead, rather, they taught them about synthetic hormones. Uh, so-called hormones. They're not really hormones. The most popular one is made from pregnant mare's urine. <laughs> A horse has 34 different estrogens, none of which are compatible to the human female. And so no wonder they're sweating and, and they don't have a sex drive and they don't like the way they look and they don't like the way they feel. So it's always a privilege for me to be able to um, walk someone through it. I never give advice. I just say, if it were me and I were you, I would go see this doctor because I know, I know doctors in pretty much every city in America who are doing it the right way. So that was sort of satisfying today. So I want you to know. I want you to know that too. Okay. What? Susan Oliver said, I love your top, Suzanne. Oh. And Susan, I love Suzanne's top too. <laughs> <laughs> Susan, we don't know what he means, you know, you know, he's a bad boy, or as Caroline and I call him, a rascal. But I, I like this top too. I've worn it a couple of times on the show and I kind of don't get tired of it. Sort of kind of does everything I need it to do and I enjoy it. So anyway. You're getting a lot of love on your side part. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I changed my hair a little bit today. Thank you. Yeah, I was looking at the show the other day and it was a little too staid straight down the middle so i thought i'd change I like it up that today. that yeah. looks better i much prefer that well there you go it, you know what it is it's personality there you go it, it gives you personality not that you don't have personality personality so what's da 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 i don't know I don't you know, know years ago when i was a kid i was in my early 20s i used uh -huh. to go to provincetown in um what country? In Massachusetts, in Cape Cod. Oh. It's at the very bottom of... Top of the of... morning to all of you. Okay. This is our 5 o'clock cocktail hour. Top Alan and I morning. are having our clear tequila. And I hope you'll join us. And there was this wonderful club there. It was a gay club. And uh, the guy who owned it, I think he owned it, uh, at 8 o'clock, a door would open in the ceiling. And in the, the ceiling? Pardon? In the ceiling. In the ceiling. And a not a ladder, steps would come down oh. to the floor of the club. Oh. And the guy who was uh, rather uh, hefty. Yes, or would, stout. Would come down the steps singing that song. Oh. Yeah, it was great. You, you know where else that happened? Alan and I um, were alive in the era of Studio 54 in New York. And man, was that fun. That was the height of Three's Company. Uh, Three's Company was the number one show in the country. I gotta say, that's fun. And um, they had a red rope and only somebody's could get through. And I think because my show was so popular, I was considered a somebody. And we'd go inside and I remember one, what, 
was it New Year's or was it just a, like a Saturday night? Diana Ross is that was New Year's hanging off the balcony and they looked nude. Were they nude or were they nude bodysuits? They were wearing uh, nude bodysuits. Yeah, and hanging from ropes in the ceilings. It was like Sodom and Gomorrah, and um, we had we really had fun. And we took uh, Bruce Bruce and Stephen that night, our sons. Um, but they weren't allowed in Studio 54. But before that, we went to the River Cafe, uh, which is right at the water's edge down there. And we had this dinner. And Bruce got so excited. He was having so much fun because we were in a limousine. And we went to this restaurant. And he just started, like, almost convulsing. Remember that going, this is so great. And then we heard this terrible sound, like a gunshot. And, oh. It was, and everybody instinctively dove to the floor, and over there, a bunch of bodyguards stood up. Who knew everybody had bodyguards there, and nobody got hurt or anything, but... No, but it wasn't an actual gunshot. What was it? I don't. It was one of those things that, that was New Year's Eve, remember? Oh, yeah. They it didn't was one of those oh, things yeah, yeah, yeah. that you pull, and it goes bang. Yeah, oh, that's right, and the guns that came out were the bodyguards' guns. Right. Yeah, but it was like... Oh, oh, this is heavy duty. Anyway, tonight, um, Alan's been waxing poetic about Manuka honey all week. Oh, it, I, you know, aside from the liquid oxygen, which, as you know, is my favorite product, the Manuka honey, okay, is incredible. I'm not yeah. kidding. It's incredible. He says this to me every single morning. Okay. The only other thing he went that crazy over was the liquid oxygen, which you called... Stuff. Stuff. Yeah. Where's that stuff? But I tell you, the manu the yeah, manuka he honey. It. He loves it. He I don't loves know what it. it is. Manuka honey only comes from New Zealand, which is the only place they grow manuka flowers. Why is that? Can't you just grow manuka flowers? Maybe that's where they want to grow, and well, they don't probably. want to grow anywhere well, else. I'm sure they're wild, and the bees love Is there a story them. to the manuka flower, Caroline? Well, it just has these incredible benefits that the honey, that they pollinate the manuka flower, which is indigenous to that area. So I'm sure they could try to start growing it somewhere else, but why? It's natural habitat. So why? The, it just has so many incredible properties that manuka honey. I remember the first time I heard about manuka honey was from Michael Feinstein, the um, singer, composer, entertainer extraordinaire, a good friend of mine. And he swears by Manuka honey because he's a singer uh, to keep his throat lubricated. And uh, then I started hearing people talk about Manuka honey. And then we talked to our formulator, and she said, Oh, I can do the most incredible, incredible skincare uh, line for you. So we've got that tonight, and we've also got the, um, the, the, the soothing gel, Manuka honey soothing gel. We've got the Manuka Honey Moisturizer. We've got the Glutathione, which I can't wait to talk about because it's so important. We've got the Anti-Aging Eye Cream. And then we've got Alan's favorite, Liquid Oxygen. Stuff. Stuff. And, by the way, yeah. Diana Villa or Diana Villa said, how can I order your product? The answer is go to SuzanneSummers.com. And I think, isn't that first page about when you enter the site, Caroline, that you get a discount? Um, yes, if you're, if you're a brand new customer, um, it, you'll be prompted to download a code for 15% off. Um, but tonight we have a special promo code if you're an existing customer. You want to share the code, Alan? Here it is. 25% <laughs> off skin care. Like fabulous And graphics. the promo code is BLUSH25. There it is. We're going to be talking about most embarrassing moments. Yep. Most embarrassing moments. I've had them. Don't what? you want to know what made Suzanne blush? Well, actually, you've had two. I've had more. Well, I know, but I'm as it comes to me. I've, shall I? I'll, yeah, I want to just tell you the very first one I ever. That you don't even know about this. I was from San Bruno, California, and God, I could, wish I could get this picture. I um, didn't want to tell my parents that I was going to run for Miss San Bruno. <laughs> <laughs> Were you Miss Garbage before or after, after. that? After. Miss Garbage no. was after. And, and um, 
So I kind of sneaked out of the house because I was going to have to stand in front of a bunch of people in a bathing suit and high heels. And I knew my mother would go <gasps> like that and my father would do whatever he used to do. And so I, I try out for the Miss San Bruno contest and I become the second runner up. I don't win. I'm not Miss San Bruno. And you're not the first runner up. I'm not the first, but I'm the second runner up. Well, I was going to Catholic school at the time, and they just impressed upon us, always, always, always wear a girl. I don't know why. I weighed, what, like 98 pounds. And, and um, why? So your butt cheeks wouldn't shake or something and be uh, suggestive. And so being and a good girl... Pat, you can't wear patent leather shoes either. Yeah, and, and being a good girl, I put my girdle, why I even owned one, I don't know, but that's because the nuns said you got to own a girdle. I put it under my bathing suit and didn't realize when they said, ladies, please show us your backsides, that my two they garters... Said, they said that? Yeah. Yeah. My two garters were hanging out of my backside. So the next day, on the front page of the San Bruno Herald was a picture of Miss San Bruno, but a big picture of me from behind with the two <laughs> garters hanging down. And I came to breakfast and my father went, what's this? <laughs> maybe it was not a girdle. Really sexy, but then it was like... Yeah, maybe, so wrong. I was so mortified. No, maybe it was... Maybe you were wearing... A, they used to call it a Mary Jane. No, no, I didn't no? own anything like that. I had oh. a girdle because the nuns told me to get the girdle. Any of you ever wear a girdle? Can you imagine wearing a girdle today? I've I don't know, That's one thing I've never done. Well, it's just called a Spanx. Yeah. Called yeah. a what? Yeah, we all worn Spanx. Okay. God, okay. I hate putting them on. Okay. I, I have two I have two okay. most embarrassing moments mm. by Suzanne Summers. Okay. I'm not going to tell you the second one for a while. I'm going to save it. Aren't I going to tell that? No, you can. Yeah, the one you're going to start telling, and I'll finish telling. It. <laughs> okay. 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 But here's here's what I'm just going to throw in. Yeah. Okay. We used to in the '70s. We lived in Venice, California. Yeah. And there was this restaurant there, that was the hippest restaurant in town. I mean, it was the hippest, coolest Owned restaurant. Owned by Dudley Moore. That's right, Dudley Moore, and yeah, also that and great director. I can't remember yeah, his name. Yeah, right. And uh, so we like we enjoyed going there. The food was really good, and it was like mainly entertainment people, and you know, big shots to little shots, but it was great. Yeah. So uh, one night we're there for dinner, and Suzanne's all dressed up. I mean, all dressed up. As I do. And I, I got I, I got dressed up that night too, and we walk in and we get like they give us a killer table, unbelievable table, and everything's great. And we order our food, and everything's great. And after our and food, hi Harrison. After our food, hi Francis Ford Coppola. Yeah. 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 Hi, Stephen. Yeah, Stephen Spielberg. And and after, nice to see you again, Stephen. Yeah, that's right. And after that's right. And after uh, dinner, before dessert, Suzanne excuses herself to go to the ladies' room, or as they sometimes call it, the rest room. I don't know why no one ever <laughs> rests there. Okay. You sit and rest. She goes to the ladies' room, and Suzanne has one of the greatest walks in show business. Okay. Says the adoring. Husband. Maybe the greatest walk in show business in five inch heels from Manolo <laughs> Blahnik, blah, blah, blah. okay? So only she, $565. So she walks to the ladies room. And uh, when she's done, she starts walking back to our table. And I notice that hanging out of her dress at the bottom is toilet paper. <laughs> A whole long all roll the way. of toilet paper all the way. that went all the way from the, the way. toilet all the way to our table. And uh, there were people who started giggling when they saw it. <laughs> and a couple started to applaud. And Suzanne thought they were applauding for her. <laughs> okay. And my great idea. <laughs> That's right. So, but you yeah, know what? That I, was mortifying. But you know what? That was great. I love you for that. I mean, you know, what you did was you looked perfect, and then you put a little thing into it by so not perfect. dragging toilet paper into the restaurant. I remember once saying to my therapist, I try so hard to be perfect, and I never hit the mark. She goes, well, 
welcome to the rest of us. And I thought, yeah, there is no perfect. So what do you got there in front of you? Okay. This uh, is good stuff. I know two of these things. One that has always been my offering, favorite Is this the offering or are all five of them? It's 25% off skincare. So it just gave you a few products to talk about in the skincare category. But all the skincare. Okay. If you haven't tried the Manuka Honey and you love my line, you'll love this. I, I, I can honestly uh, enthusiastically encourage you to get some soothing um, Manuka Honey Gel and the moisturizer. I, I, I'm actually starting to get bored with Alan going on and on and on every day. He puts it on, and he must put it on two or three times a day, because every time you put it on, you go, this stuff is so great. And I this, do. I, well, my I, hands look better. I put it on at least twice a day, once in oh, the come morning. come over and show them your skin. Oh. Your beautiful skin. He has beautiful skin. Oh. You know, while Alan is on the way over, a lot of people had heard about Manuka Honey, about how healthy it was to eat it, and it is very good for um, digestive tract. It's, um, it's antibacterial. It's antimicrobial. It's an amazing product. But the topical benefits for the skin are also incredible. So Suzanne brought two products for you. One is a moisturizer that you use on your face. The soothing gel you can use on your face or your body, and particularly great if you've had a lot of sun exposure um, or you have any kind of irritation. Um, yeah. People are sending us unbelievable testimonials about, um, you know, we can't, we can't talk about it preventing or curing any medical conditions. Of Darn. Skin. But people sure are talking about any type of irritation or, um, like I said, like the sun exposure, how, how soothing and wonderful these products are. I wish I could say everything I wanted to say about it, but um, we say things like supports. <laughs> well, I, I, I believe it could probably heal a broken leg. Okay. This is Alan lying. I believe. We're, we're, we're not allowed to say that. Oh, yes, okay. You know. Sorry. This is Alan lying. Alan okay. lies. For all of you out there just meeting Alan, he lies all the time, but I always you know, uh, uh, cover it. You know how, you know, we've been together for over 50 years, and uh -huh. you know how. 54. You know each other yeah. really well. Mm -hmm. And also, we haven't been apart for more than an hour in over 40 <laughs> years, okay? No, we. But there's, no, that's what? that's a bit of an exaggeration. No, it's not. When have we been apart over an hour? That's so sick. No, it's not. It's functionally codependent. <laughs> Bruce one said of our, that. Right. Yeah, Bruce said that's that. Right. So uh, there's a there's a little secret I'm going to I'm going to share with you about Suzanne. There's something about Suzanne that is a little odd. Okay, a little odd, and. Here it is. Watch her reaction to this, okay? Are you ready? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> she can't, I can't take it. She can handle me <laughs> kissing her on neck. On this side. Uh, only on this okay. side behind this ear. The rest ear, of her body so is no problem. Ticklish. And, it's so, and it's your so, beard also. It's like, it's I, can't, so, I, I can't do it. It's so weird. It's not weird. It's a little <laughs> odd. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, it is true what Alan has been saying about this manuka honey because he keeps calling me about it. He does. I know. Yeah. He yeah. won't. He, he won't about stop about talking it. about it. Yeah. Let Let's do uh, more. Let's do. Also, it's a natural moisturizer. Yes. Yeah. It's a humectant and it draws moisture to the skin. It's antimicrobial, so if you are blemish prone, it it can be very helpful for that. Um, and like we said, any kind of irritation, and of course, the anti aging benefits are. Unreal. And my skin is irritated right now, and it really, um, I just, uh, it really helps me a lot with my well, irritation. <laughs> don't, don't, don't. You know, the difference with our formulator, too, is that okay. she has put it into these okay. formulas, and they do not feel sticky. <laughs> He's she a bad really, boy. <laughs> He's so bad. She gets, she gets a very... Um, High percentage of manuka honey in the products without having a sticky residue. Yeah, it's not it's sticky at all, at all, at all. Yeah, it's beautiful. I, I mean, if we were starting all over again, you could just like start with this and just do. I think we're going to keep expanding on the manuka honey line because it's so phenomenal. So give it a try, and then. Okay, so we're ready to hear your your most embarrassing moments, Suzanne. I've kind of been avoiding it. All oh. right. All right. All right.
But I'm going to pay it off. You will. You'll pay it off. I, um, for uh, many, many years, was a Las Vegas headliner and will be again when I'm 80. Did you make the deal for me at a hotel for when I'm 80? No, but I have time. All right. We only have five years. And I want you to make that deal. I can't believe I'm going to be 75. How exciting. Anyway, um, so during those years when I was a headliner, um, I, one of the things that was unique about my act is I never left the stage. But I changed my clothes at least five times, maybe six times, I can't remember. And I had a 25-piece orchestra and I had 10 or 12 dancers and these fabulous costumes. But I find when the entertainer goes off stage to change clothes, the energy drops. And so I never left stage. And so what would happen was when it was time for me to change clothes, the um, dancers would bring out this screen and behind the screen was my wardrobe person with the wardrobe. And so she, her job at this one particular point in the show was to take off the dress that I have on, pull on my dance pants, and put on the next costume. She put on the next costume, but forgot to put on the dance pants. And I didn't realize that I had no pants on. So now I, the screen is taken away and I go into my thing and I'm dancing and I'm doing splits and I'm doing lifts and everything. And there's a woman in the front row going, so Al, you take over. Okay. So I usually, uh, once, the show, once, the, once the show starts rolling, I usually go to the back of the room and it was a big room because I think the, I think it, it was like 1,200 seats or 1,400 seats, big room. I go back to where the sound guy is because that's the best place to hear the sound. So I'm standing there with the sound guy and Suzanne's behind the screen, you know, changing. And when she finishes, the music, you know, suddenly goes from tinkling uh, piano keys to the whole band and she comes out dancing with the with the with the dancers the boy dancers a leopard top and a black skirt oh, yeah. that was uh, up to the slit to the waist and she does a she does and you lift her up and she does a split and i'm standing at the back of the room and i can see she has no pants she the girl was supposed to take no <laughs> leave the pants, pants on in, but in her rush she pulled the pants off and forgot to put them back and forgot on. to and and when i walked off stage that night she was in the in the wings going i'm so sorry i'm so sorry i'm so sorry and i hadn't quite known what had happened because you you're on automatic when you're out there and she said i said what what she said i for, i did forgot to put your dance pants on i said what what oh what? yeah oh yeah and you the people especially in the front row and then the next the next day in the las vegas bugle or whatever it is it's Oh, uh, Suzanne Summers shocks the audience. I'm thinking, I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to. <laughs> Actually, you know, the 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 most interesting and kind of funniest and uh, moment when you were on stage. Uh, you know, it, it, there's a, it's Easter time in Las Vegas. It used to be a tough time for the hotels to do business. Yeah, yeah. People wanted to be home. They wanted to go to church. They wanted to be with their family. And the Easter Bunny. Okay, right. So. Uh, so we were asked to do the show uh, for that weekend. And so we're doing this big show, right? And the other thing about Vegas, uh, when they have trouble getting people to come in because it's a holiday or whatever, they literally give it away. They give away the room, they comp the room, they, or they comp the steakhouse or- and To the losers. Whatever, okay, to the people who will come. Okay. Well, it's it's kind of a no. Good a lot of a lot of the people get that get comped, or the people have lost yeah, a lot a of good, money. Yeah, it's a good. So let's it's invite the losers so they don't feel yeah. so bad. Yeah. So. And the losers drink a lot. That's right. So the band is you know playing. The big band is playing <laughs> and screaming away, and the dancers are dancing, and the lights are lighting, and everything is great. And Suzanne comes out, and she starts dancing and doing her thing and singing whatever <laughs> you were singing, and all of a sudden a woman in the front row and in those days the front row was right up against the stage so that the stage was at uh, chin level yeah. to the woman yeah suzanne comes out in big huge and applause and whistling and screaming and the woman center stage in the front 
throws up on the stage. Right there, yep. where I was dancing. Big yep. pile of barf. Yep. Huh. Yep. Thanks. Thanks, lady. <laughs> Thanks. Well, you know what? Free drinks. That's what it is. Free drinks. Yeah, because they're, they they want to make the people who lost all the money, they want them to come back, so they take really good care of the people who lose. You know, yeah, there's a whole formula in Las Vegas. You know, Las Vegas is a very interesting place. Uh -huh. And uh, the mob used to really understand how to run a casino. They'd give it all away. And uh, the high rollers would come in on the special jet and they'd give them whatever they wanted, the big suite, etc. And they made money. Yeah. It was the way it was. And also they had a huge Asian audience. Uh, and actually one night uh, when... Oh, that uh, guy who loved me. That's right. We had, oh, that guy, he was from, was he China or Japan? China. 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 No, no, Japan. No, I think, no he China? was Chinese. Okay. Yeah. So he would fill he a... He came for me. Yeah, he would fill a 747 with all his friends. He was a, he was in the uh, fitness business out of China, very wealthy. He'd fill a 747, which I guess is around 500 seats with all his friends and business associates and family, fly to Las Vegas for a week and they'd play golf and gamble and who knows what else they did. And it would come see <laughs> And there are nights I wonder, there are people who get backstage and they're usually people who tip the maitre d's, like stick 500 bucks in their, in their pocket or a thousand, who knows, I don't know. You're not a tipper like that, nor am I. And um, I don't like tipping. And I only there would be nights when, when my it. dressing would be filled with uh, Chinese people, and I think, what's this about? And then you realize, you know, television is so powerful, and Three's Company was so powerful because it could be transported to any country in the world, and the dialogue and the facial expressions were so simple that even if you didn't speak English, you got it. And then they'd have the subtitles underneath. I've had more people. Remember, I remember after the um, some Olympics, there were uh, oh, when the Olympics were in LA. I ran into a lot of Israelis, and they go, "Oh, you're the girl from Three in the Apartment," <laughs> and because they're all watching. And so um, we, uh, it was a huge, huge success in China. Imagine. And then when my book uh, Knockout came out, uh, Doctors Curing Cancer Without Drugs became the number one book in China for over a year. So I have had great, great success with uh, the country of China and the people of China. Anyway. I have some nice testimonials for you when you're ready. Please tell me. And by the way, by the way, my friend Rick said when he's flying, he's always watching this, and he's always commenting, and I never answer back. So if you see Rick, R-I-C. Okay, okay, just for those people who just joined us, here's the deal. 25% off skincare. The promo right code is BLUSH25. Okay. There it okay, is. So we have some trends. Um, Slew 925 I came home from work today, took off my socks, and my ankles were so itchy. I put the Manuka Honey Soothing Gel oh. on it. Within minutes, the itching stopped. Oh. Oh. And Sundance Anna says, I had a dry area at the crease at the top of my leg, a dry, irritated patch. Put the Manuka gel on it, and it healed within a day. Amazing product. Wow. Hey, hey, wow. I just, hey, I just wondered. Anderson wants to know if the Manuka honey products are safe for kids. Gosh, yes. They're organic. Yes. There's, there's nothing. It's all uh, from nature. Yes. In fact, Eugenie says the Manuka gel helped heal a spot I had removed with liquid nitrogen. It's amazing stuff. Wow. When and I have friends who... Kathy McKee said the Manuka honey product has cleared up a psoriasis outbreak on my eyelids and a spot on my neck. The greatest oh. of great products. Oh, wow. Thank you so much. Now, of course, we can't make any medical claims. That's a personal testimonial that yeah. Kathy's saying. Um, but we can't say that it heals or cures anything, but we're glad you had success with it. So I am so glad. Thank you for sending me that, because actually you can say what we can't say. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, okay. So, Saya Carlisle says, what, you don't like tipping? Al, shame on you. Well, let me explain this. <laughs> oh, no, you tip well. No, let me explain But you this. used to be the recipient, so. That's right, but let me yeah. explain this. I know, I know how to tip, okay? Tip. 
because I've been a, uh, a, a guy who parks cars. I've been a bellhop a couple of times. I, I lived on tips, so I know how to tip. I bet you were a hustler. I, I, no, I was like good at it. No, I mean that in a, in a yeah. complimentary oh, yeah. way. Yeah. Little, little Dubby, Daddy Kravitz. No, I, I actually, this, this uh, hotel was a summer resort north of Toronto, and the men would bring their wife and family there for the summer, and they'd come up on weekends, and when they'd leave, they'd hand me $5 and say, I especially Mr. Sherman, okay? Okay. Mr. Sherman, uh -huh. okay? He always gave me nice money and said, you know, look after things. No, if we go to a restaurant and the service is great, I tip great. If the service is lousy, let me tell you, one night we went to one of our favorite restaurants and something was going on with the waiter and the chef and like we heard them yelling at each other. That was and awful. The waiter brought our food and never turned up after that, okay, to get to order dessert even if we didn't want it. But the 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 what do they call those guys who clean dishes away? Bellman? No, no. Um, the bus boy. Bus what, boy. What is it? Bus boy? Bus boy. Bus person. The bus boy was great. Okay, the bus boy took away the dishes, said, What else can I get for you? We said the menu, he gave us the menu, we ordered dessert. Okay, that night I gave the bus boy a lot of money. What's a lot of money, Al? Well, in those days, well, it is today too, $50. Huh? Yeah. Just to make a yeah. point. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. And the, the, for the waiter, I left him 10 cents. <laughs> really? Yeah. Really? Well, you know, most, services, when, Alan's, when Alan's saying he doesn't, he doesn't make exorbitant tips to get the best table, or right. he's not going to slide right. someone. He's not saying he doesn't tip service people. He tips service people very fairly and very well. Always. He's saying he's not like the big shot who goes in with, you know, here's 500, get me this. It's like people should give you good service regardless. Well, that's like that, that um, famous restaurant in Malibu, and you know which one I'm talking about, Caroline. Um, People have so over-tipped that guy at the front desk. By over-tipped, because Malibu, $500, $1,000, $2,000, like stupid tips so that the people who live in Malibu, who just are like us, you know, where you might... Well, you, get nice, you get nice tables because you're a celebrity. I, I do, you but when... celebrities. We do, but when but when the rest of the group there is giving five hundred and a thousand, you don't get the nice table because now who who yeah. was it before anyone had ever heard of Suzanne Summers? Like that was in seventy seven when Three's Company went yeah. on the air. Yeah. This was probably seventy four, seventy three. Who did they think I was to get that great table? in oh. Beverly Hills. Yeah. Okay, we'd get in, people would line up every yeah. night, and we'd be, I don't know, 20 back in the line. Yeah, and then they'd say, and that's right. And Suzanne and I would, who did they think I was? Steve McQueen. No, no, that was in Tokyo. No, no. they thought you were this guy. That's, right, that, but that was in I, Tokyo, they no, thought I was No, but in Beverly Steve. Hills, they thought no, you were. You know no, you know who it was? No, no, you know who it was? George Siegel. Oh, he was a big star at that time. You're right. They told me I, I was think George. You're right. They George thought Siegel. I was George Siegel. I always think okay. he looked more like Steve McQueen. Well, Steve back McQueen then. was in Tokyo when I went yeah. to the first night in Tokyo when I went to take a bath. Okay, to get a bath taken. Thank you. I heard, oh, Steve McQueen, and I thought, <laughs> should I tell them that I'm? No. My name is Alan. No. 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 So for three weeks, I was Steve McQueen. Wow. You know what it's like to be Steve McQueen in Tokyo? What is that? Glutathione serum. Is it? I yeah, I, I, Catherine Pitts is asking questions because she loves so many of your products and she wants to know how you layer them. So she's calling out some of the products okay. that you have right in front the, of you, including glutathione. All right. Liquid oxygen, ageless serum, glutathione, the night cream, the peptide creams. I first always put the uh, brightening serum on. Do you have like dark spots and things like that? Brightening serum will lighten uh, dark spot. I always put that on first. That's my base. The second thing I put on is liquid oxygen. Liquid oxygen is like giving your skin a drink. It's oxygen suspended in liquid. Plus, it has apple uh, extracts, um, apple lentil extracts, and there's and one watermelon. and watermelon. Yeah. Okay. It's got a lot of great stuff in here. So put that on. This is Alan's favorite product. 
And then now, if I had this in front of me, I would put the, al the Manuka honey gel, which is that soothing gel. I haven't tried this. Before the glutathione, you do the Manuka no. honey? No, I, oh, did I, did I screw that up? I'm, no, this I would do, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The brightening serum, then the glutathione. Why the glutathione? I love talking about cells. Every cell has a, 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 um, uh, an energy center in the middle called the mitochondria. But as we get older, that energy center loses its pep, like we lose our pep. And the reason it loses its pep is because it doesn't have the glutathione. So the glutathione activates the energy center of the cell. That's why when little kids come in from outside in the playground and they're all pink and rosy and everything because their their uh, cells are working perfect. It's all about cells. Suzanne, I'm, I'm, I think you're talking about uh, CoQ10, which is their product on Friday. We're, we're CoQ10, Friday. CoQ10 is the ripcord. is like the ripcord on a motorboat, but the glutathione is. Um, Your best antioxidants. <laughs> right? Well, the glutathione is in every cell in our skin, also. So we've got the, the CoQ10 activates the energy center, but the glutathione plays a role in that too. I will on Friday get the exact wording for that so I don't confuse you, but you're right. And then um, the final thing you put on is the anti-aging eye cream, which we can actually say uh, helps with dark circles and fat bags under your eyes. This stuff is amazing. And I'm going to be 75 very shortly. And I, yeah, I'm wrinkled. But it's kind of okay, you know? That's, you know, mileage. Mileage? <laughs> mileage, right, or kilometers. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, there are mornings I sit there and I do what we all do, like, what would it look like if I did that and that? But um, I'm pretty happy. You, know, you, you really can't. You, it's, I, I love the way you're aging. I think you look beautiful and you, you look real. And... I Thank know you. there are a lot of procedures that can be done, and women who do them and have it done well, they also look great. But I just, what I don't like is that people are so critical of people who have had work done or people who haven't had I know, work done. I know. And it's just like when they say, I wish people would age gracefully, and then you find someone who's aging without a ton of plastic surgery and things. Me. It's like, what Me. did you age? I'm not, I'm not doing all that surgery and... Um, I get my, I, I don't know, I look in the mirror and I think, I look good, I like a, and, and a big part of it is my relationship with all of you. Um, I'm on full hormone replacement. I, I'm happy about that. Uh, thank you. I make sure that I... It was pretty uh, terrible for three years. It was, w before I started taking hormones. Hormones yeah. are the game changer. If you, if you are like any of these women I was talking to today who are sweaty and they're spitzing and they're saying all these things, read my book, I'm Too Young For This. That's the best book on hormones that I've written because I'd written so many up to that point. It was mo That's the most up to date. But, but the worst title. Worst. Uh, I was working with my publisher in New York and it was a bunch of New York women who were in perimenopause. And they said to me, I... I I pitched a book about hormones, which had a great title, and I'm not going to tell you, because I'm going to do that book. And um, they said, ah, oh, that title offends me. And then, then I knew they were in menopause. And, and then we knew it was a great title. <laughs> it was a great title, yeah. Right. And so um, they, back and forth and back and forth, and I'm usually really solid on my titles. I know titles are everything, and I don't let anybody dissuade me, but these New York women were like really pushing, pushing. And one day I said, well, it's for all these women who think they're too young for it. They go, that's the title. I said, I'm too young for this? Yeah, okay, all right, all right. I think, I think that will work. But you know what? It's the best book I've written on hormones so far, the worst-selling book on hormones so far, because all the women who think they're too young for this thought they were too young to buy the book. And so the menopausal women... Uh, thought I had abandoned them because I'm writing up about, about perimenopause, but really, and I'm too young for this, it's even too garbled a long title. Um, it has, it deals with perimenopause. Here's what you're going to start to feel when you're starting to decline in hormones. 
but here's where it goes. And when it goes to here, here you do this, you do that, you do that, you balance, and I do the whole thing that I do in my lectures about the teeter-totter and all that. You'll love that book. That book will help you so much. And as we go, go on in our shows, I will do another hormone lecture because I love doing that. So, uh, Teodora yeah. Kostadinova. I think oh, I, Teodora Kostadinova. I think okay. it, Russian, it sounds Russian or Ukrainian. Okay. Yeah, nice. Your sexy leg supplement saved my legs. How about that? You know what? Thank you, and I get it. I get it. Save your sisters, too. Yeah, my sister has... Um, uh, cankles, which are when your uh, ankles swell so much that they're the side of your the size of your calves. You know, even if you didn't That's explain from poor circulation. If you didn't explain what cankles was, uh -huh. we would all know that it's something you don't want. You don't want. You okay? don't want. And we knew a lady by the name of Cankle. Remember? No. In Minneapolis, she passed away, so I can talk about her. Uh huh. I don't. Remember. And her last name was Cankle. Huh. Yeah. Mm. And I did a little joke one well, day, and no one left, yeah. including you, you her. You do that. Pardon? You do that. Um, you guys, you know, it's almost 5.45, so... Oh, oh. I need to hear Alan's oh. most embarrassing story, but uh, I just oh. wanted to say one more thing about Suzanne's weighted ion serum. This is our most expensive yep. serum at SuzanneSummers.com because glutathione is such an expensive ingredient. And you know, Suzanne, she doesn't just put a little bit in there. She puts the maximum that you're allowed to put in an over-the-counter product. So that is why the glutathione um, serum is so expensive and why it's so effective, um, especially for anti-aging, because the as Suzanne talks about, you know, those free radicals that we take in and all that environmental stress that you get, it happens on your skin as well as inside your body. Yeah. Since the glutathione is your detox agent, on the skin it helps detox the skin and it gets rid of that oxidative stress that causes wrinkles and dry skin and aging skin and that product is incredible. I, I use I use this every day. This is like uh, and my skin is irritated right now because I'm stressed right now because I'm moving. Moving is so hard. I know don't feel sorry for me but oh my god this is so hard to move after 45 years. All we do all day long is pack and pack and pack. I get so excited that I get to come down here and talk to all of you so I can stop packing. Last night I was so tired after dinner, I fell asleep at 7.30. Don't ever do that because you know what? You wake up at midnight and you're like, you've had your okay, sleep. Okay, but that's four and a half hours sleep. Yeah, it's not yeah. enough. I need eight hours. And then I want to go back to sleep and I don't take drugs or anything like that. So I'm lying there meditating. I'm going breathing in four, breathing out four, breathing in five, breathing out five. And then I start going, oh, I didn't get that stuff out of that top cabinet out there. And oh, we got to move the thing. And today I had to move my university body model. I sent a video to Caroline because I took the university body model, which is maybe you've seen it on my desk in my office. Yeah, I'm going to post it. It's so funny. Uh, it, it's like I had to, Alan drove me down the hill in the golf cart and I'm holding this person. And I have to hold her by her breast because I don't want her parts to fall out because all her parts come out. So that's. It's been the most valuable teaching tool I have ever had because when I can't figure out something on my own body, I take my body model completely apart and I take, they come out in layers. The lungs come off, the, the, the breasts come off, then the lungs come off, and then, the, and then, and then you get be, beyond the lung. Do you know like what's behind your lungs and, and how your whole esophagus is working? That's how I figured out that, oh gosh, here's the stomach, here's the liver, here are the intestines. The intestines are where everybody thinks is this is stomach. I've learned so much from this body model, but I had to take her down today. And when we laid her on the bed in the yellow house down below, Caroline, it just looked like I was apologizing to her. I'm sorry. And then in a little plastic bag, I had the male genitalia for when I want to, I don't know, am I uptight or something? But I always felt kind of Yeah, you've never used weird the, the having guy the male. Stuff. I just yeah. don't feel like having in my office a guy with a, an erection. No, it wasn't an erection. Well, it was kind of. It was sort it wasn't, of. It was impressive. It was, and like, it was, oh, it was yeah. Michelangelo's yeah. version. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which, be, speak. Uh, a couple of people have some questions. You guys, this is not a kit that we're selling today. 
Suzanne has a few <laughs> products that she's featuring. Um, everything the Manuka Honey. Com in skincare is 25% off with the promo code BLUSH25. Okay, so Alan, can you tell us your most embarrassing story? On and, and just remember, and remember out there, all of you, the, the Manuka Honey, the soothing gel and the moisturizer, give it a shot. Give it a shot. You know, okay. I rarely say that, but give it a shot. Okay, I'll take okay. it away. <clears throat> all right. Now, I've probably had hundreds of terrible things happen that embarrassed me, but this I guess this was the first one, okay? When I was, I think, 15 or 16, probably 16, I, I had my first date. And my first date was with Molly, who was the daughter of the shoemaker. Okay? Was she Irish? No. And I really, I, I like Dolly. I like Molly, Dolly. not Dolly. Or Molly, rather. I liked Molly. You liked her so much you can't remember her I name. <laughs> I liked Molly, but she wasn't like, <clears throat> it wasn't like the big turn on, okay? Oh. She was just oh. a nice girl, and I liked her, mm -hmm. okay? So, but Sheila, I really liked Did Sheila. Did you call her crazy Sheila? No. Oh. That was crazy Dorothy. Oh, crazy Dorothy. <laughs> I really liked Sheila, Oh. Okay. So got but Molly, I, I could Sheila, never, and I could never get a date with Sheila. Oh. Oh. Sheila was always busy. She had boyfriends Sheila's lost. up to here. Okay, so I never got a date with Sheila. And I'm like, did 15, you ask her? Fifteen, sure. 15, and she said 16. no. No, she would say, "Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm busy. I've got something to do yeah. that weekend." Okay. Okay. Anyway, so I have this date set up on on Saturday night with Molly, the shoemaker's daughter. Of course. And. <laughs> She and, was only a shoemaker's daughter, but, but oh, could she how ever? She could. Whoa, what a heel! <laughs> so, I, I connect with Sheila, and Sheila said to me, "I'm available this evening," and I thought, "Oh God, what a terrible decision I have to make." So I said, "Okay, I'll meet you at." And I told her I was going to meet her because we didn't have cars then, and she said, "Okay, I'll be there." So then I said to my father, Dad, if Molly calls for me, please tell her that uh, I had something come up really oh. important and I'm sorry I had to cancel. So I leave and I go out with Sheila and we have a great time. And uh, at the end of the evening, I go home. And the end of the evening in those days was like 10 o'clock. And a kiss, good night. I go at the front uh, door. I can't remember. I love the kiss at the front door. Yeah, I can't remember if it was a kiss or not. Yeah. yeah. It was, if it was, it was that, that was it. I go home and I, my father was there and I said, So, Dad, what did you tell? Uh, did Molly call? He said, Yes. I said, What did you tell her? And he said, I told, I told her that you uh, decided to go out with Sheila. <laughs> I said, Dad, I asked you to. He said, I'm not going to lie. Why would I lie? Your dad never, never. Told My father a never lie, lied. Ever. ever. Honorable guy. Mm -hmm. Shake hands. You got a deal. Okay. He never had a credit card. He never had a driver's license. Uh, he so never. So, did you ever than... see Molly again? No, Molly is spit at Screw me. Screw you. Yeah. yeah. Go out with Sheila, and I bet Sheila never went out with you again either. No, she didn't. She didn't. That well, was it for Sheila. What did you and... learn from that, Al? Well, uh, what I learned was from my father. Uh huh. Was don't lie. Yeah, yeah. Well, Don't then lie. it was all worth it. Never it was all worth it. It was Never great. Great life lesson. And okay. I was saying, I, I have another two quick stories. Um, remember the glutathione. It's really good. And the anti-aging and the liquid oxygen. But the Manuka honey, if you haven't tried it, try it. Okay. Two great stories. No, they're not great. They're interesting. Uh, Alan was partners with Dick Clark, the famous Dick Clark. I love Dick Clark. God, he was fun. We spent... Uh, Alan and I and Dick and his wife Carrie and I Carrie and I were the two girlfriends we uh, had our love affairs with Alan and Dick individually uh, but at when, the same time but at the same time when Alan and Dick were producing a show in Canada called Man Trap and Alan put me on his show and it was my, my first experience with television in Canada and I was so excited and by the way the first time I met Dick Dick, Dick and I were put together by Dick's agent. I didn't have an agent. I remember. And the first thing Dick said to me was, I've got a great title for a show. I don't know what the show is. He said, the title is Man Trap. Great title. And I told them what the show was. 
Great we did title. a pilot. We sold it. Did series. Yeah. That that could sell again today. Man trap. Yeah. So, so anyway, um, now Dick and Carrie are married, and Alan and I are married, and I'm on Three's Company, and I'm really famous, and Dick's doing some show. I don't remember what it was, but anyway, I was being presented as the star of whatever the show was, and I was to come on the top of the stairs in a gown. I'm Chrissy Snow, and I get at the top of the stairs, and I'm all dressed up. And I look great, and I can't believe it. I'm really nervous, and it's really great. And I go to walk down the stairs, and I missed my step, and I fell all the way down the stairs. Perfect. <laughs> if only you'd been wearing a girdle. If, yeah. What more perfect entrance for Chrissy Snow? I could have <laughs> planned it. I didn't plan it. I was so mortified, and everyone's going, it's great, it's great. So, anyway. I'll tell you another one another time. You know, uh, uh, Dick, Dick and I, uh, uh, when Alan's we were in business, tell stories now. we used to go to New York every week, uh, mm -hmm. Sunday night on the Red Eye, and we'd be there Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then fly back. And sometime, and we shared a house at Number 5 Gramercy Park. I love in, that place. It was great. Number 5 Gramercy Park in New York. And uh, sometimes I'd get there before him, and I'd start cooking. And he, uh, it was, a, you had to walk up three flights of stairs. And he'd start going up the stairs and he'd smell garlic. And he didn't like garlic. He then. said, he would go to a phone booth, this is before cell phones, go to a phone booth and say, uh, let me know where you're going to stop with the garlic. And I said, <laughs> I've stopped. Okay. He didn't like garlic. Then, years later, yeah. he and Carrie loved yeah. garlic. Dick Clark was a class act. Yeah. You two were great partners. I will always, there are people, as we're going through all the things as we're moving, I, I was looking at a picture that Alan found in his files that he showed me the other night about a dinner party we had in the dining room here. I couldn't believe who was at that table. The first face I saw was Merv Griffin, who I would, if I wanted to give a dinner party here, I would first invite Merv. And if Merv was available, I'd build the party around Merv because Everyone loved Merv, and I say this all the time, I will miss Merv till I die, and when I go to heaven, and I am, I will meet Merv Griffin up there, and Alan and I and Merv will hang out together. So anyway, at the table is Merv Griffin, and he brought a princess with him. They're always from Yugoslavia. And then there was um, Barbara Sinatra, and Barry Manilow, and um, Diana Ross was over here on this side. And Keely Smith, remember Keely Smith, that old black magic got me in a spell. She's sitting there, and I, I, there are more people at the table I can't remember. That We've had some wonderful times here in this house, magic memories, uh, incredible family times. This Saturday night, because it's our last Saturday night in our house of 45 years, all of our family is coming in, all of our children, all of our grandchildren, all their significant others. I actually ran out of rooms. I've got Bruce and Caroline in a hotel down the street and one of my grandsons and his girlfriend down the street. And I'm so looking forward to this last night together. It's bittersweet to have lived in paradise for 45 years. And I, I think we did this property well, don't you, Caroline? Oh, amazing. Amazing. And I thought about all our grandkids. They all grew up here. And our kids, from the time they were 12 years old, grew up here. So a lot of energy here. And I couldn't close down the house without having this night. And so I'm looking forward to that. And so tonight is the last night we will be in this studio. I know you don't like the background anyway, so you'll be happy. Friday night we'll be at Big Al's Bar because the weather has cooled down. And the next shows after that, until we move, will be at Big Al's Bar. So we will see you at Big Al's Bar on Friday night. I'm really looking forward to it. And I just want to say what I say a lot. That beautiful quote by Lao Tzu. If you're depressed, you're living in the past. If you're anxious, you're living in the future. If you are at peace, you are living in the present. And I wish you peace, because right now, this moment, it's all we've got. It's all we've got. And it doesn't matter who you are, what you do, or what you have. It's only about who you love and who loves you. And I love you. Good night, everybody. I'll see you Friday night, okay?